I remember almost 20 months ago uh, being invited by Alistair and Ed and the O'Reilly guys to be part of the program committee at Strata. And the first Strata was around 12 months ago. And I, I remember going through the motions and thinking about this thing can be really big. And 2,000 people in this room today, all of you are testament, this thing is really big. <laughs> and I think uh, on behalf of all of you, on behalf of myself, I would like to recognize the entire O'Reilly team to have thought of this idea almost 20 months ago, to have executed it flawlessly. So please, get up on your feet and a big round of applause to everybody at O'Reilly, and especially Ed and Alistair, for making Strata the only data conference you should go to. Thank you. And, and because it's like the Oscars and I got 10 minutes and I've already wasted a minute thanking everybody, I'm going to go here and get started right away. So I don't want to get beeped out or musicked out. My personal homage to this gentleman. William Levitt is called the father of the American suburb. He literally created the great American dream. Built homes right after the Second World War that were extremely affordable and outside the city. Look something like this. Also a very modest gentleman decided to call them Levittowns. You can still find Levittowns in America. This was the, the, the literal building and start of American suburbia. They were $10,000, and they all looked the same, inside and out. They were also, much, not much different from then today, funded by the US government to enable the biggest American dream of all, owning your own little piece of land in America. Helping him. And I could not have done this talk without him, by the way, so a big homage from me to him. Helping him in that vision was another fine gentleman, Henry Ford, who gave us tremendous choice in the kind of cars we could have. Un unbelievable amount of variability, but only one color, right? But, but the two forces combined drove what we now know is the big American suburb. And, and I posit was the start of the homogeneity of the population which built entire business models and companies exploiting that homogeneity. But I think we've all learned. We've all learned over time. Data is not a new problem. Big data is a sexy term, but not something new that we've not done in the past before. We've always used data and intelligence. But the, the, the reality is, us as a society, as a socioeconomic model, are a data-rich society but very information poor. The tools we've had to extract information really haven't been able to give us the power to solve problems that need to get solved at massive scale. So while suburbia looks the same today, this is a current picture of a typical American suburb. They were called McMansions in the 19, I think in the 2006s. It wasn't a very kind term, by the way. And hasn't changed much still funded by the U.S. government, still an incentive to own the, 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 the classic American dream. So suburbia, while it still looks very similar, inside of it, the needs, the wants, and it took a popular show on ABC to help us realize it, I guess, or help me realize it, the desperations are different. Every single individual, every single consumer, Every single product sold to the consumer, every single thing that the consumer wants to buy or needs to buy is different. And again, a big, bold statement. In the world of data, there is no 1%. We're all equally rich and equally poor. We're all equally different. So the ability to actually understand and grasp that difference, take away the homogeneity, is incredibly powerful, but also a must-have, a must-need-to-be-done for us to solve problems that we could not solve before. And I'll give you an example of what I mean by that. I've said this over multiple years now. The tools to build a better financial system are already here. They were invented on this coast by an industry that has made a business out of looking at gobs and gobs of data and making it useful for billions. The same tools translate beautifully to solving other bigger problems in our society and economy. That better financial system will be built in America, in this country, by leveraging the same tool set and the same power. What do I mean by that? 
The, commodities, the commoditization of the data stack is finally complete. It started with hardware years ago, and has now finally entered what we call in technology the BI stack. It's all free. It's all open source. So the ability to actually look at problems off scale, and I'll give an example very quickly of a problem at massive scale, decode it, demystify it, and then solve it is finally possible because you can do it. It's economically feasible. It is, it is feasible from an uh, analytical and insight perspective. And it's also feasible by applying the same tools of the trade to different socioeconomic models. And the predictions have been made. So the initial revolutionaries have already come out and said years ago that the world where data is ubiquitous and the tools you need to harness that ubiquity are here. And the talent will get there. The talent, the ecosystem, is being built around these conferences, around all of you sitting over here, opening up your minds to the power to a system that has the ability to build new companies, disrupt existing models, and create a level of innovation we have never seen before. And more importantly, challenge ourselves with the thinking that if technology was not a constraint, because that is true finally, what problems would you solve? And the list is limitless. There are enough problems in our country, in the global world, that need to get addressed and solved for us today. We're living in an unprecedented time where every single industry vertical that we knew existed can't grow anymore and is facing some sort of a catharsis moment in its business socioeconomic model. Whether it's healthcare, financial services, retail, telecom, or even the web. Old models just don't apply anymore. And the ability to create a new economic framework driven by the fact that technology is no longer constrained is incredibly empowering. Which takes us to what kind of problems should you look at? And let's again go to another revolutionary in, the, in a different sphere. Mortgages, mortgage-backed securities, the credit crisis as we know it is a massive industry issue not just for a particular industry, not just for a particular country, but for the world at large. And Warren Buffett said something very interesting in that statement, outside the big numbers, that I like a lot, because he's absolutely right. While it may seem a lot of what we see, or what we saw in the current economic crisis, is a problem, a lot of it is not. There are enough people, enough societies, even in this current economic crisis, working their hardest to keep their job, put their kids to school, and make the payments on their loans. And we have to be able to recognize that to solve the problem optimally. What it needs is the ability to build a common platform. There needs to be common platforms that need to be built in other industry segments outside the web, which is a phenomenal job in solving this issue or problem in its own segment, to Store, process, analyze, and visualize all of the data in all of its glory. To do things like this. My company, Trisera, actually launched at Strata, the first Strata in Feb last year, has done that. I was taught early in statistics that an average of an average is a white lie. And it's true. Looking at a national indicator, the story does not seem very positive. But let's go dig deeper and look at something at a county level. And then you see sp sp sparklings or sprinklings of green. Let's look at the zip level, more green. And let's take away the zip myth. At a street level, greens and reds are all over the place. And that's the ability we need to deliver if we have to be able to solve problems at massive scale with massive intelligence. Because the platform to collect data, store data, process data, analyze data at the individual unit level finally exists. So what does it mean? With all due respect to Tim O'Reilly and Jeff Hauerbacher, two gentlemen I, I love a lot and respect a lot, I would like to offer a small edit to a statement that they made a year ago, which is most of the best minds are solving the problem on the ads. There are some others. There are some others, a lot of them at Strata this week, the next few days, looking to take the same power and solve problems of a much bigger scale, simply because they transcend every single boundary we knew. So here's my request to you, I'm out of time. Here's my request to you. 
I request all of you in this room to take some few minutes, recognize those individuals, find them. They are the revolutionaries of this next massive transformation we will see. And thank them. Thank them for picking problems, solving problems of massive socioeconomic impact, leveraging the tools that were invented right here. Thank you.